Do you know your risk posture? With Crossbow, you can run and analyze adversarial campaigns in real time against your production infrastructure to validate your intrusion detection, antivirus, phishing protection, and incident response. Know your cyber exposure with Crossbow. All right. Are we doing an interview? What are we doing? We're just goofing off. I think we're just fucking I think we're live. This is. Oh, we're, the red hey, light is we're on. recording. We're, oh, God. <laughs> Seriously? The red light is on. He's like, yeah. What do you think, idiots? I'm here to record. Jason Lancaster is here with us from SpyCloud. Jason, hey, welcome. Paul, thanks. Back to the program. We've, yeah, you, yeah. we've, it's been a couple we've years done this before. Yes. Never in quite nice and swank and sexy of a porn set setting, yeah, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about the future of security. Jason. What are some of the major changes you hope to see in security in the next five years? Okay, so five years, that's a long time to be able to protect. So make it three it. years. But, you know. Next week, what do you think? <laughs> one of the things that I've been seeing, obviously we're failing at patching, right? Just basic blocking and tackling. And I see that this shift in software architectures, uh, this move to the third platform with cloud, mobile, social, analytics and all <clears throat> creates an opportunity for us you know where where you have immutable servers now that are defined as code and i can rotate those that, those out easily i, I think that the, con containers for the for the in my final answer so containers <laughs> i think is, is a big part of this as well but even things like you know chef and puppet where i define what that system Wait, can we is put ansible in there too because i like ansible yeah Ansible rocks. So, okay. Jenkins, Travis, Bash, Salt. I mean, okay, there's a long list. There right? is a long list. But if I can Ansible's define the what this server should be, then I can rotate it easily, mm -hmm. right? And <clears throat> then tackling that challenge, I think, probably becomes easier. In the, in the interim, there's going to be a lot of struggles to overcome. I mean, we see almost weekly now some S3 bucket that's not properly secured. And so there's challenges in, in moving to cloud. But I think that the way that it has a more programmatic approach to the infrastructure itself is probably going to help mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, but the landscape ke keeps getting more complicated at the same time. As, as okay, well. so we're screwed so is what you're saying. We're, well, definitely we're – there is no secure, right? <laughs> What would you like to see happen? Don't keep telling me why we're screwed. What do you want to see? No, what I want to see is that some of the those evolutions that are happening outside of security drive us to be able to deliver better, more consistent security, especially like on what? the basics, these blocking and tackling things that, you know, we spend a lot of time as security professionals and, at, at, you know, seeing talks like this week talking about sort of the edge, but most of the issues that people are actually getting pwned with is it's not the, some way out there you know it's not bleeding edge level, stuff bleeding edge you know super most secret of it squirrel is stuff but. because they have active directory <laughs> throwing that out there like hacking a segue is awesome i think that's really cool we need to, we need that information we need people looking right. at that yeah, yeah. but most organizations are like just the sheer fact of having active directory no matter how you've secured it you're pretty screwed I actually, I know a pen tester who he walks in and to do the initial talk mm -hmm. and they go, oh, we have SharePoint. He goes, okay, here's my report. Uh, I'll be back. When you get that fixed, you know, yes. I'll, I'll come do the rest of your stuff. He has a stock report for SharePoint. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, don't you think that most of the areas, though, are challenged because of manual processes? Maybe there's an actual process. Maybe there's some documentation, but there's not a lot of automation around that there's not a lot of standardization and so the rest of the it industry is going that direction i think as we embrace that more and more i think you're seeing that more in in SOC approaches um in tools that are being leveraged in, in those sorts of environments and mm -hmm. that's going to give us more of a of a hope of being more successful i think let's talk about the threats how will they evolve in the next five 10 years or next week i mean whatever you're comfortable <laughs> with jason right. in terms of time frame he's like i can't go that far it's too fast no i think at the same time we're seeing the evolution of new technologies everywhere exploding um you know just DevOps approaches and cloud and the ability to roll something much faster has 
cause challenges for security. So as those things grow faster, security's ability to keep up, to understand where those holes are, where those vulnerabilities are in an ever-growing matrix of, of systems and authentication mechanisms. But isn't that why we have AI and machine learning? Yeah, you know, I... Oh, you're bad. <laughs> no, I, I think that there's certainly hope for that. I mean, just being able to see things like autonomous vehicles and, and the technology that's consumer driven you know like the internet was created because of porn right I mean, that, that drove the adoption okay of, it was actually military but then no, no, it drove no, the no. mill it drove the internet yeah porn porn drives technology porn and the internet some of it military. was filmed right in this room as well so or not cool. drive the military <laughs> as well does porn drive there is top secret porn i'll have you know okay. yeah not, not a joke actually if you plug no if you plug a, if you plug a usb drive with porn on it and tell me what soldier doesn't have a usb drive with porn on it into a top secret computer by accident guess what Anything on that USB drive is now classified top secret. This is not a joke, okay? And so there is actual classified top secret porn. Uh, it, it, they're all like, oh my God, just, just wipe it. It's, I'm not sure that's how, is that how it works? That's what I was told by a gentleman with a top secret clearance who said, yeah, I, did, I screwed up. I'm like, what happened? He goes, I plugged my dri I long drive. Porn. I thought we weren't <laughs> supposed to be plugging random USB drives into... This is old. This is an older story. This is an older okay, story. Okay. That How shut we, the Pentagon down. What were we talking about before the porn part? <laughs> Dude, AI. porn drives AI. us. So, but you see advances, like rapid advances, um, whether it's leveraging micropayments and cryptocurrency in you know, Africa or you know, in Silicon Valley with uh, autonomous vehicles and that sort of thing. There's definitely a lot going on in areas like AI that I think will... Will uh, AI increase our security or will it decrease our security or will it go in a third direction entirely? until the point of singularity. And then the machines take over. And I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first person to go there. Seriously. When we've talked about that in, well, in AI. Yeah. It's a consensus then. Yes. Right. Well, no, two people are not a consensus okay. yet. Yeah. Okay, we still need... Where, where do you stand on this? on this important issue than yourself, I'm still Paul. struggling with whether you stand with Elon or, Mo or Zuckerberg it'll be more like the Matrix or more like Westworld I'm still struggling with so that. you're dead and e you're either dead or in a bubble <laughs> powering the machines yay what great choices <laughs> yeah so, so where do you stand the point of that though is that AI complicates things I mean I, I look at now where you walk in a store and your phone you know some vendor says hey I see that you're at this store would, would you like to tell us about it or your experience and where's your rating what do you think you could, can you give us five stars please because right. we need five yeah. stars can you answer these questions about it or um you know implantable you know <laughs> nfc for for that you know that sort of thing uh implantable nfc like the, oh now i feel better the chips you know i mean I, things are certainly getting more complicated and yeah, that's true uh but I think that there's there's definitely a lot to that. We've seen over the last few years, just in the groups that I've been working with, that <clears throat> the more that we can capture some sort of analysis that we're doing as an algorithm and apply that to our research, that we can scale much further. We can go levels deeper because I can now I had the result of that is a new data set that I can apply analysis to. And so the more that we can programmatically approach those problems, I think it puts us further and further ahead and, and shrinks <clears throat> timeliness to response and you know um, so I think I think that's gonna be a, a good thing yeah. I hear lots of buzz about the lack of talent and and you know people that you can hire the openings <clears throat> you know I don't know what to make of that other than certainly the the issues that we're facing the amount of actionable events that we see are increasing certainly beyond the the people that we're producing out of you know academia and you know training people to, to be able to deal with this and so we've got to be able to augment that with compute would you like to play some trivia uh, just a tiny a t uh, just one a couple question. i get one josh says i have one question stump the stump the guest is that what we're do you want talking? malware trivia or hacker trivia uh, hacker ha famous trivia. hackers Hacker trivia. Famous hackers. Okay. Widely I've got known. One, maybe two. In 
Okay. Widely known as one of the fathers of the internet, he is the co-designer of the TCP IP protocols and the architect of the internet. He's the Al Gore. <laughs> that is, is Al Gore designed most... TCP IP. <laughs> Very popular oh, man, answer. No, it is I not actually, Al Gore. Uh, two words. I think I know who this is. Yeah, Chief thank you. Internet Evangelist for Google. Oh yeah, I don't know that. It is Vince Surf. Yeah, no. You, really? knew, you knew that. Friend. You knew that. Okay, okay. Do one we can phone a friend. <laughs> All right, you ready? We'll go to the next one. You ready? He was highly influential in the development of theoretical computer science. Some people answer it right here. I'm just saying. No pressure or anything. <laughs> You're a bastard. <laughs> Not trying to make you look bad on camera. I mean, we are filming. I appreciate that. Okay. I'll, I'll go on. Providing a formalization of the concepts of algorithm and computation with his machine. Turing. Yes. Very good. Very yeah. good. Okay. Very good. That very was all good. I had. I, I, Josh said one and I did two. I'm already in trouble, so I'm going to stop quilting my head. I'll take it. Not bad. 50%. 50%. 50% you did awesome. Jason, thank you so hey, much. A professional baseball player. Yeah, you're doing I'd be great. doing really great. You'd be bad 500. <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. It's all good to see you again. Thanks, Jason. Good to see you. HP Protect. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was.